There's a fungus among us, and it's not good. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam, and I've been researching lots of stuff about multiple sclerosis since I've been dealing with it for 38 and a half years. Well, this time, I was out looking at something for another reason entirely. I have a friend who has a leak in her bathroom, and she's got a carpeted bathroom floor, and that leak's been going on for quite some time. She doesn't have multiple sclerosis, but she's getting a lot of symptoms that are just kind of strange. And then I sort of by accident stumbled upon some information about mold toxicity and mycotoxins and how those might cause these very symptoms. And I thought, well, interesting because the symptoms they're talking about being caused by mold also sound a lot like the kinds of symptoms we get with multiple sclerosis. So I thought I might want to look into that a little bit more. Mold in general is pretty horrible. According to this study that was published in Brain Behavior and Immunity in July of 2020, mold inhalation causes innate immune activation, neural, cognitive, and emotional dysfunction. The authors, and you can see there are quite a few of them, they're all from the City University of New York. According to the study's abstract, individuals living or working in moldy buildings complain of a variety of health problems, including pain, fatigue, increased anxiety, depression, and cognitive deficits. Now that is interesting because it sounds like a laundry list of multiple sclerosis symptoms, and I of course am not suggesting that mold causes MS. We're not going to go that far, but I think what it can do is trigger our multiple sclerosis symptoms or exacerbate them. And let's go on and see what the mechanisms are and how that happens. The ability of mold to cause such symptoms is controversial since no published research has examined the effects of controlled mold exposure on brain function or proposed a plausible mechanism of action. Patient symptoms following mold exposure are indistinguishable from those caused by innate immune activation following bacterial or viral exposure. And you may have keyed off on a few of those words, and they're all things that are important when we discuss the mechanisms of multiple sclerosis. We tested the hypothesis that repeated quantified doses of both toxic and non-toxic mold stimuli would cause innate immune activation with concomitant neural effects and cognitive, emotional, and behavioral symptoms. So they tested several different kinds of spores from mold, and they say here that both spore types decreased neurogenesis, so that's the creation of new neurons, and caused striking contextual memory deficits in young mice while decreasing pain thresholds and, and enhancing auditory cued memory in older mice. Non-toxic spores also increased anxiety-like behavior. Levels of hipp hippocampal immune activation correlated with decreased neurogenesis, contextual memory deficits, and or auditory cued fear memory. Innate immune activation may explain how both Toxic mold and non-toxic mold skeletal elements caused cognitive and emotional dysfunction. And of course, this is not a study that's specifically about multiple sclerosis. Well, part of an article about mold and MS and how the two of them look like there's some linkage, there's, here's the section on why patients suffering from mold illness could be misdiagnosed with MS. And they say three out of four Americans who naturally produce antibodies to mold toxins can live and work in water-damaged buildings without suffering significant demise in their health. But patients who carry the HLA gene have no antibodies to deactivate and remove mold toxins. They develop excessive accumulation of those harmful toxins. 
Mold toxins are lipophilic, meaning their molecular structure consists of fatty acid molecules. For this reason, mold toxins migrate to and deposit in the brain because the brain is the fattest organ, consisting of 60% fat. Mold toxins destroy the myelin sheath on brain neurons, causing the classic white spots seen in MS. And this is from Dr. Rick Sponagel of the Florida Detox and Wellness Institute. But as they say here, as stated earlier, MS is caused by the degeneration of the myelin sheath. The current theory, MS is a chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease of the central nervous system because the body attacks the myelin sheath. Symptoms of MS include the following. Fatigue, vision problems, tingling and numbness, vertigo and dizziness, muscle weakness and spasms, problems with balance and coordination, speech and swallowing problems, cognitive dysfunction, difficulty with walking, bladder and bowel dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, mood swings, and depression. And I think we're all familiar with most of those, or all of those even, as symptoms that we deal with day to day with multiple sclerosis. Now here they go on to talk about individuals with a genetic susceptibility to mold illness. And they may have many of the same t symptoms exhibited by those suffering from MS. Problems with thinking, concentration, memory, and judgment, difficulty speaking and slurred speech, eye problems, extreme and chronic fatigue, dizziness and loss of balance and coordination, feelings of tingling or numbness in legs and arms, muscle tremors, loss of arm, hand, or leg strength. And they say that long-term exposure to stachybotrys or chitomium can destroy the myelin sheath that causes many of the same symptoms that MS victims can have. Even though we've learned so much more about MS and the underlying mechanisms of it, it does seem that in some cases, a condition that might be diagnosed as multiple sclerosis could actually be the result of mold toxicity. And so, of course, it behooves anyone to test and just be sure that they don't have mold toxicity going on instead of multiple sclerosis. In a very broad and detailed study published out of Leipzig, Germany, November of 20. 21, they seem to see a link between mold mycotoxins and, and a dysregulated immune system. And I will, I will say that the conclusion of this paper does not postulate that there's a causal link between mold exposure and multiple sclerosis or pretty much any of these other conditions they talk about. They mention asthma, they mention HIV, but they do see a strong correlation between the triggering of MS symptoms and other inflammatory-based diseases, the worsening of those things. They do see that the exposure to mycotoxins can aggravate pre-existing conditions, or if your immune system is compromised, it is much more likely that you will be triggered to feel the effects of mycotoxin exposure. I will not go through the whole thing, but let's scroll down here. There's a very interesting part of the study that talks about mycotoxin exposure and its association with autoimmune disorders. And they talk about the pathogenesis of autoimmune disease is multifactorial with both genetic and environmental factors playing a role. In addition, epigenetic modifications can be triggered by environmental exposure to cause aberrant expression of genes and induce autoimmune diseases. So something in your environment can work on over top of your genes to trigger certain expressions of your genes that might not have been expressed otherwise. And so as they go on to say here, multiple sclerosis is characterized by neuroinflammation an axonal demyelination of neurons in the central nervous system and spinal cord. A correlation between fungal infection and MS has been described 
for, for yeast candida. Irrespective of MS diagnosis, neural protein autoantibodies were increased in several individuals which were exposed to mold. Similarly, a conducted cohort study of eight females with known exposure to water-damaged or mold-contaminated buildings were tested positive for IgG neuronal antibodies against microtubule-associated protein 2, myelin basic protein, tau, gliofibrillary acidic protein, tubulin, and S108B. Nevertheless, these results must be considered with caution since mycotoxin measurements in patients' serum and urine are missing. They say here in vivo, GTX exposure worsened the phenotype of an experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis model, which is what they do, by the way. EAE, whenever you see that, is related to studies done in mice. So in this model, they were able to trigger neural in, neuroinflammation and demyelination, supporting the hypothesis of an association between mycotoxin exposure and MS aggravation. And they say next to neuronal autoimmunity effects, additional observations regarding autoimmune abnormality have been seen regarding fungal and mycotoxin exposure. In a small case control study, the elevated levels of antigenicity for anti-mitochondrial antibodies in six patients were all associated with mold and moisture exposure. Mold-derived mycotoxins might induce mitochondria damage and trigger autoimmunity via AMA, which are, in, for example, detected in more than 90% of patients with primary biliary cirrhosis. And their findings indicate that mycotoxins facilitate the entrance of mold components like inflammagens and or allergens by compromising the barrier function resulting in an inappropriate immune response. They go on to say, furthermore, in MS, the blood-brain barrier function is altered. A recently published review summarizes pathophysiological studies of MS patients showing blood-brain barrier abnormalities and a strong correlation between inflammation and degeneration in MS progression. And as they say here, in autoimmune diseases, inflammatory processes, for example, neuroinflammation and multiple sclerosis, are key mechanisms to pathophysiology. Environmental agents like food additives and pollutants or toxins, among which are mycotoxins, at prolonged low dose exposure conditions might trigger the essential molecules associated with central nervous system immune system interaction. The conclusion that they come to is pretty interesting. They say that mold and mycotoxin exposure for people who are not immunocompromised, they don't really see compelling results in any of their tests. But on the other hand, as they go on to say, the situation appears different considering the role of mold, in particular, of mycotoxins as risk factors in the onset and severity of various diseases in individuals with an already impaired immune system. Exacerbation of asthma has already been shown in well-designed human cohort studies, meta-analyses, and animal models. Although there seems to be an association between mold mycotoxin exposure an exacerbation of other dysregulated immune conditions like inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune diseases, or disease progression in HIV-positive patients, no causality could be demonstrated to date. Not just multiple sclerosis, but a lot of different conditions that are affected by exposure to mold. Mold may not cause those conditions. I certainly don't think it causes multiple sclerosis. But it certainly mimics a lot of the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. So if you're newly diagnosed and you want to get it checked out, you might look into that because it's worth it, right? You don't want the mold in your house anyway, and you certainly don't want to go down the road of being treated for MS if that's not what you have.
Even if you really do have MS, you don't want mold in your house. Mold, though, it can even be invisible. You don't necessarily have to see black stuff crawling up your walls or anything. It can still be extremely damaging to your health. So I hope that you will look into that. I know that there are resources in many places where people will come out and test to see if there's mold in your house or even what kind. And then, of course, fix that. Because fixing it is really important. I'll tell you something, it's not going to go away by itself. So you might want to look into that for your own health's sake and also for your family. But that's all I have today. As always, please take really good care of yourself. And I'll see you again in my next video. Mm -hmm.